EcoFlow are a popular name amongst campers and adventurers for their portable power stations and solar generators. These allow you to store power in a portable unit to take along to charge your devices, run small appliances and provide lighting. They are now taking it a step further with their launch of EcoFlow power kits. This is a modular system designed specifically for RVs, camper vans and trailers and small off-grid installations. The idea being that the system eliminates the complexity of traditional setups, being plug and play, compact and efficient and allowing modern monitoring and control. EcoFlow have sent me their 2 kilowatt hour kit to set up in my workshop and show you how it works. The core system consists of the EcoFlow power hub, a smart distribution panel and then a control panel or console. These arrive in this awesome matte black packaging, protected with foam inserts. I really like the sleek and modern design they've gone with, and they've used high quality materials as well. This feels like a premium product that's built to last. You can then add up to 3 of these 2kWh or 5kWh batteries to power the system. What makes this system great is the ability to easily add or remove battery capacity in your setup, so you can start small and expand as you need to. The batteries are also stackable. You can stack up to three of the same size batteries on top of each other when you scale up your capacity. The power hub is the main storage and generation controller. This includes a pure sine wave inverter which can produce up to 3600 watts of mains power and can handle a surge of up to 7200 watts. It has a range of ports along the bottom and the sides into which these pre-made cables plug into, making it an easy to install plug and play solution. It can also do up to a 1000 watt supply of DC power at either 12 or 24 volts. To charge the batteries or supply power to the system, it's got a 3000 watt AC charger. Then the DC input for the alternator can take a 1600 watt alternator or PV input, and the other two solar inputs can each also do 1600 watts, all with MPPT charge controllers. So you can have up to 4800 watts of charging capacity on the DC input. Along the side we've got two RJ45 ports for CAN communication, and then an AC output and a DC output which supplies power to the smart distribution panel. So through the available inputs you've got options to charge the system through solar, through one of their smart generators, through an alternator, an AC power source or through a generator. You can then store the energy in up to three batteries or two batteries in one of their smart generators. The batteries are lithium iron phosphate and both models run at 51.2 volts. The 2 kilowatt hour ones have a capacity of 40 amp hours and the 5 kilowatt ones have a capacity of 100 amp hours. They are each rated for 3000 cycles with a discharge depth of 80% so they should be good for around 8 years when used daily. They've got an integrated battery management system with auto heating for use in cold environments, a built in fuse and other safety protection features. The smart distribution panel is designed to replace your existing van or trailer's distribution board. This board provides 6 20 amp protected AC mains outputs and 12 fused DC outputs, which are all controlled by the power kit console or through the app. They also give you full power monitoring capabilities as well. The console is a 7 inch IPS touch display with an RJ45 CAN communication interface. And this is the primary means to interact with the system if you're not using the mobile app. The cables come with the kit as well, and are pre-terminated to quickly hook up to the distribution panel, alternator or solar panels. Each cable has a clearly labelled plug on the end, and the plugs are all different, so you won't be able to plug them into the wrong ports. Before I install the system in my workshop, I'm going to hook some of the main components up on my workbench so it's easier to see how it all connects together and works. Connecting the components up is really simple. You just remove the covers from the ports you want to use and plug them in. First let's hook up the battery to battery port 1. Then we'll connect one of the CAN interfaces to the smart distribution board to control the circuits and get power consumption data back.
We can then connect the console to the other CAN interface. The console is where we will be able to control the system and see our energy usage information. With those hooked up, we should be able to turn the system on. From the console, we get information on the battery capacity remaining, as well as the expected runtime with the current power consumption until the batteries are empty. You can also turn loads or inputs on and off and access system settings. I'm going to connect it to my Wi-Fi network, so I have access to the system remotely as well. The battery is only at 29%, so I can plug in the AC input into one of my mains outlets to charge. They've also got some really clever features here. The built-in charger can charge at 3000 watts, but if you had a small campsite or RV park, then your site probably won't have the capacity to supply this much power so you can limit the charger's power draw as well. You can also easily adjust it up or down to suit new sites. Now we can see the home screen is switched to tell us how many hours it's going to take to fully charge the battery. If you've got multiple batteries connected, you can also get more detailed information on each. The Power Hub has some status indicators along the top to tell you which inputs and outputs are currently active. And you can use the buttons below the indicators to turn the AC and DC outputs on or off. The battery's indicator shows you its charge capacity and has a little indicator in the corner when it's charging as well. I've now connected one of my 3D printers to the smart distribution panel. So we should see its power consumption start showing up if we set it to preheat. If we turn off the AC input, the system is then running solely off the battery. So now the panel's indicating that it'll be able to run for a little over 2 hours at this output. The 3D printer only draws as much power when heating up. Once it's running, it then uses around 100 to 120 watts continuously. So the 2 kilowatt hour battery should be able to power it for around 13 to 14 hours using 80% of its capacity. If we switch the printer off again, the load drops back down to almost zero. The system can also easily replace a 12 or 24 volt system you might already have installed, as it's got a built-in DC to DC step-down converter. I'm also going to try powering one of my printers directly, since they all run on 24 volts anyway. This should actually be more efficient, because we're using direct DC power from the battery, rather than converting it to AC power and then using the power supply on the printer to convert it back to DC. So now that you've seen how the system works, I'm going to get it installed in my workshop. I've bought two of these benchtop plug points, which I'm going to install on either side of my workbench. One in my work area, which I'll be using for my laser cutter, and one on the 3D printer side, which will run my 3D printers. I'm also going to connect my workshop lights to one of the 24 volt DC outputs. Installation is really simple. Each part of the system comes with a manual and its own set of mounting hardware, including brackets and screws. They also give you a few different fuses for the DC circuits. Each device to be mounted also includes a mounting template to make sure you get the holes in the right place and you allow enough room around the power hub for cooling and cabling. I've got solar panels on my home which provide excess power during the day, so I'm going to set the system up to charge during the day and I can then use the stored battery power overnight for lighting and to run my printers. I could also add a dedicated solar panel to the system in my workshop, but since I've got panels already installed and the power available, I may as well use it. With the system installed, I'm now going to try configure it properly using the app. The app gives you a similar set of controls to the console, with the added benefit of being able to control the system remotely. You can also turn power inputs on and off, and you can control all of your loads.
It gives you more detailed information on your daily, weekly and monthly energy inputs and consumption. You can get detailed information on each of the connected batteries and see the remaining time to fully charged or the remaining run time when using the battery's capacity. They've really put a lot of effort into the app. Even the graphic on the home screen is animated. You'll notice things like the batteries change to show your current configuration and the inputs glowing when active. With the system now set up in my workshop, let's try load it up. Let's start by turning on the AC and DC outputs. I can then set my 3D printer on the 24 volt supply to preheat and the load should then increase. I can also now turn the printer on and off through the console. Next let's try turn on the two printers on the AC supply and preheat them as well. So now we've got a little under a kilowatt of load on the system. Let's add another kilowatt from our workbench and see how it handles it. So now we're up to 1.88 kilowatts and it's still running perfectly. It's drawing slightly less from the AC supply than what it's supplying. I assume this is because the battery is full and it doesn't want to overcharge it. If I now add almost another kilowatt, let's see what happens. So that's still running perfectly. It looks like two of the printers have reached their target temperature and are now using a bit less power. But we're still using around 2.5 kilowatts and the system is still running. Now let's see if we can turn off the AC supply and run entirely from the battery. This is going to be quite a significant load on this single 2 kilowatt hour battery. It'll be drawing around 50 amps just to keep up with this load. So it looks like the battery's okay with that load as well, which is quite surprising. You can see it's indicating that it's supplying just under 50 amps at 50 volts. The last thing I want to show you is the app controlling the system as well. You can use it to turn the inputs and outputs on and off, and you can monitor the system status and usage. EcoFlow have made some really smart decisions in the design of the system. All of the DC voltages have been kept below 60 volts, so they're safe to handle, but they've also gone with 48 volts instead of 12 volts, so that the cable is carrying a lower current for the same power output. This means less heat is generated and the system is more efficient. The other great thing about the modular design is that you aren't locked into a particular size system. It's really easy to expand or reduce capacity and even add or remove charging options as you grow into your van, RV or off-grid home installation. I'm really excited to see how my workshop does on this system. It allows me to keep a much closer eye on my power consumption and also helps me to use the excess solar power generate during the day to run my printers, tools and laser cutter at night. Let me know what you think of the EcoFlow power kits in the comment section below and let me know if you've got any questions on it or if you'd like to see me try something on the system. I'll leave links in the video description to their store and website where you can find out more about the system. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics, projects, tutorials and reviews.